the reason why I built this Chevy Express uh, bug out moto van, which I took a Chevy Express cargo van and turned it into an RV basically, and I paid less than $10,000, including the cost of the van. The van was like $3,000 and I spent the rest in building out the van, which you could do it a whole lot cheaper than I did, but I put a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, but a lot of people are turning to doing a van build. You could save a ton of money. A lot of people are doing it right now. Well, you know what? I'm fixing to keep it real with you and tell you the ugly truth about living in a van and van life. Well, we just got a call about something strange in the front seat, so. Oh, let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. Right now, we're living in turbulent financial times with inflation high, high housing costs. I mean, the median house price is over $400,000 here in the United States, which is crazy. And as a result, rents are skyrocketing. There's going to be a wave of evictions. Food costs have gone up. It's, it's expensive to survive out here now. And a lot of people are looking for cheaper options to live. For those of you guys that want to see the full tour that I did on this bug out moto van, I'll include the link in the description and comment section of this video and if you want to do a van build yourself and you want to get stuff that I use to build this van if you go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my van stuff that's links to all the stuff I use to build this van now to get to the ugly truth about living in a van look I'm gonna keep it real with you guys it is cool owning a van like this and traveling across the country on some trips here and there like I've been doing. But there is no way in hell that I could permanently live out of this van year round. And I tell you, there is an extremely small percentage of people that can actually pull this off and do so. A lot of them are, some of them are BSing you, man, and living out of like motels here and there and other places, their friends' houses and stuff, and making it seem like they're living out of their van all the time. But as you see, a lot of them eventually move up to a class ARV, class CRV, or even a, do a bus build and live out of a bus. Very few live out of a van for many years. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. I think you, you go crazy living in such a small space like this, man. But that's not the ugliest part about it. The ugliest part of van life, guys, especially if you want to live cheap, like I do, you want to go, you want to go park for free and camp out, stealth camp in the city, like I did. Uh, so it's very tough to go find a parking space somewhere, like a hotel parking lot, which I normally have done, and and you have to be careful of that because oftentimes they'll call the police on you and you'll get that knock, that dreaded knock at 4 a.m. on your van and they'll shine that bright light up in your eyes <laughs> and temporarily blind you <laughs> and tell you to get up out of there and they sometimes they can even give you a ticket where you got to go to court and then pay you like a $500 fine or something. Luckily that never happened to me. Somebody did call the police on me once though. I was at a rest stop and somebody thought I had a body in a bag in my front seat and it was my motorcycle. <laughs> so the cop was just make, checking and making sure and he actually, he thought it was funny and he liked my van. He was like, cool van. Um, but that was the only real encounter I had with a police officer, thankfully. Um, I've just had really good instincts on, on where to park and where not to park. So, but it can be very, very irritating trying to find a free place to park. Now, you can go to BLM land, government land, uh, but it's usually way out and you can stay in a spot for up to two weeks. But then you have to change to another spot after two weeks or so. And there's a lot of people doing this now, guys, living out of RVs and vans and vehicles and everything else. And a lot of people living out on the BLM land, but it's so far out um, you're probably after going to get satellite for your internet access um, because everybody out there obviously is trying to use their phone. And that's another ugly truth about living in a van is especially when you work remotely is getting internet access. So you're going to want at least like probably like three or different four different sources of internet access because oftentimes a few of them are going to fail and you, you want to have that internet access obviously to get paid. Um, also another ugly truth about living in a van is that you can only carry so much water in your van. I've got what 17 gallons of water and five gallons of that is for drinking water. And I tell you, no matter how much you try to conserve water, it goes really fast. 
Another ugly truth is this is an expensive way of life. As you guys know, gas is very expensive. And you, if you plan on doing a lot of traveling, which this is the reason why you're choosing this life, it can get very expensive, especially if you have an old Chevy Express 3500 van like mine that has a big old V8 in it and gets like 10 to 15 miles per gallon at best. Uh, and also, you're going to experience some breakdowns out there on the road, but hopefully it won't be as scary as mine was in the middle of nowhere in Utah where I had a tire blowout at 85 miles an hour and I lost control and I thought I was going to die. And then I didn't know where the heck I was. It was pitch black out there in the middle of nowhere. Luckily, I had signal and was able to call for uh, AAA, which it took them two hours because they couldn't even find me. <laughs> they told me in the town I got some better tires. I tell you, never get cheap, crappy Firestone tires. I ended up getting some really good BF Goodriches, and it cost me like $1,300. And they could have charged me anything they wanted to because I had to. I was in the middle of nowhere. Another ugly truth is that if you're living out of your van when you're not driving around, you're probably not going to have AC in the back of your van. Most people don't. And if you do have an AC, you're going to have to pull out your generator. And you're probably not going to be pulling out your generator in the city parking lots. So you're just going to have to burn up in the back when it's really hot. Have a couple of fans like I have, you see here. Uh, or you have a roof vent fan or something. But that's not going to really keep you that cool. You're going to be sleeping in sweat. Okay. <laughs> or other times it can be very cold outside. And it is 39 degrees outside, dude. Anytime it's blue. The screen is blue, that's cold. <laughs> and I, but I got this awesome, I have this zero degree sleeping bag, man. This thing is it keeps you super warm. And all you have is that little heater buddy that takes those little canisters of propane that gives you a whopping five hours on low heat. And even on low heat, it's not all that warm back there. Um, so that's just something you got to live with with the van life. And another ugly truth is that if you want to wash up, you want to take a shower, you're probably not going to have a shower in your homemade van like mine. You're going to have to take the shower in back of your van, and it's not always ideal to do that and with the weather conditions. <laughs> so you're probably going to end up just washing at your sink like I do. So, Or you're going to end up going to a motel and doing taking a bath there or something. Uh, so I know some of you guys do build a shower in your van, but it's really not that practical because you can't hold that much water in your van. Even if you have tanks underneath your van, it won't hold that much water. And trust me, water goes fast when you're living in a van. Trust me. You see me here, guys. I go to the, the supermarket to get bottles of water um, or get free water out of uh, restrooms. It's a tough way of life, guys. Pretty much you're a vagrant in a van. And another ugly truth is when you go to the bathroom in your van, when you take a dump, you take a crap, you're going to stink up the van and your dog's not going to be very pleased with you and she's going to try to blow the stink out of her nose like my dog always tries to do because it'd be stinking up in there big time. <laughs> but as you can see, the dog's whining because it smells really bad in here. It smells like a thousand farts in here, dude. You gotta air it out, man. <laughs> and then you got to figure out what to do with the crap. You put it, wrap it up in a garbage bag and you got to hopefully got it airtight because otherwise you're going to have about a thousand flies trying to get in your van. Uh, and then you, another ugly truth is trying to find places to put garbage in your van until you get to a, a gas station or something. So you're loaded with all these bags of poop and and uh and garbage and everything else and it gets very crowded in that that small space with all the junk and everything with you know it's a tough way of living and also sometimes you have to worry about your personal safety because you can be parked in some unsavory areas like i was in the south side of chicago once and i'm telling you some shady characters around there and you know the good thing is i got surveillance cameras on my van so all around it so I can see who's out there so nobody can do a sneak up on me and you know try to get me when I come out of the van overall I have to say that it's been challenging and fun uh, living out of my van on these bug out van trips now the key is trips and not living out of this van permanently and kudos to who, those of you who can pull it off uh, but most of you don't and a lot of people have quit van life as you see on YouTube but I want you to leave a comment below and let me guys know what you think of my ugly truths here. 
Have you lived out of a van? How did it work out for you? Leave a comment. Let's talk about it, guys. Make sure to hit thumbs up. Really helps my channel when you do. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that little bell symbol so you get notified of my new videos. But I release new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out my playlist for new writers and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.